It's Angela D. Young, and welcome to my channel, Designs by D. Young. So, just so some of you know, this is my dog, Macy, and she's a Great Dane, and I just absolutely adore her. And uh, it's kind of a rainy day here on this particular day, so if you find yourself uh, needing a little inspiration to know how to maybe make some of that awesome soup that might nurture your soul, well, today's the day. I'm going to show you how to make stock, and it doesn't matter what flavor you start from. So let's get started. Oh, you are really sweet. Yes, you are. Okay, all right, Mace. Say goodbye to everybody. When it comes to preparing the vegetables for your stock, all you're really going to do is you're going to take and just going to lap off the dirty edges of it. You want as much of the vegetable as possible. And you can, if you buy organic, you can leave the skins on because there's a lot of fiber that comes in the skin of vegetables. So with this parsnip, bing, bang, boom, I already know I have two, but because I'm making two different stocks, I'm just gonna chop it, set aside. Same thing with the celery. Just basically cut the one end off, and I actually want the tassels, but the whole celery stock isn't going to fit in the pot, so I'm just going to half it. Set that aside. Carrots, crazy simple. This is so crazy, stupid, simple, it's not even funny. I just chop the ends off, leave the skin on. Same thing, because I know it's not going to fit in the whole pot. Bing, bang, boom. So now I got that easy prep vegetable. Now with the onion, what you're going to want to do with this is just really kind of cut the outer layer, the ugly parts off. And once that comes off, um, I would just take this, boom, quarter it, done. Before I get too far into this, I can tell I let my oil get just a little too hot because it's smoking now um, as I'm preparing for this. But that basically means when I get ready to set my chicken in there, I better not have any water on the chicken, otherwise it's going to fly back up on me. So we're going to go ahead and go dump this in. As it cooks, you can see it's going to just basically be browning at this point. And we're going to get all of the meat cooked and start kind of warming up the bone. Now that I've been able to render a little bit of the fat out of the chicken, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to add some of my root vegetables. Because these are a little harder to uh, soften and they require some time to soften, I'm just going to, I feel very comfortable right now just kind of tossing them in with the chicken and the oil, just like that. That's it. Toss it all in the pan, just like that. You hear a little bit of sizzle? No problem whatsoever. The whole idea of stock is to get all of the um, fat and vitamins and flavor out of the root vegetable. So in order to do that next step, it's going to require a little bit of time and um, maybe finding something else to do. Maybe a TV show, a book, talk to a friend, I don't know. But before you do that, you're just gonna start to cover up your vegetables with water. And it's gonna sound a little hissy because remember, oh, this isn't so bad. All right, so we just cover this up with our filtered water. And the last little bit of filtered water continues just to cover up the top of the vegetables. We're going to turn up the heat, let it simmer, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so now we're moving on to our beef stock. Now, what I'm gonna do again with this is I have my bone marrows. I'm gonna just sprinkle them with a little bit of seasoning, some salt, and put a little pepper. Good. Take a little bit of my oil, drizzle this in again, and I have that going. My pan's already a little hot. I can tell just by sticking my hand down in here. And what I'm gonna do is take my marrows and I'm just going to ooh, not drop them. 
and stick them in my pot. I'm going to give them a few minutes to get a little warmed. And I'm going to cover them up and come back and check on them in a second. And then I'm going to add my root vegetables on top of that. Okay, the blood's coming up. It's looking a little softer. I don't want to get sick. That's looking good. I think we're going to toss in the vegetables now. Very simple. Toss in our, like just like that. That big. Boom. We are cooking here. And that's it. Now we add the water. As we're adding our last few pours of water, you can see how most of the vegetables are submerged. I'm not going to add any more water because I've only got about an inch left. But I'm going to turn up the heat. I'm just going to let this work its magic and come to a rolling simmer. And we'll check on it again. Clear gelatin, almost kind of fat, basically, is what you're looking for on, on the top of the stock. Now, let's take a look at the chicken one. Ooh, more steam. <gasps> that looks beautiful. Same thing. You can see my little fat, my little gelatin running in there. Ooh, delicious. All right, beef, chicken. Okay, now what we're going to do now is all we do is we take all of the vegetables out and the chicken of this and we just throw that away. As you can see how super simple it was to make stock from scratch. You know, the great thing about all this is you know where your ingredients came from and you're in control of how much salt and seasoning you ultimately want. We did leave it as a very basic uh, stock with just sticking with the root vegetables. And of course, you know, if you know exactly that you're making this for chicken noodle soup, you can always add some bay leaves or some tarragon or something like that to enhance the flavor. Maybe some peppercorns, whatever. But because I know I'm making this stock to go in many things, the opportunity to add flavoring and seasoning can always come. Well, thank you for joining me. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I will then put it in some plastic freezer bags in two cup servings. So then that way when I have a recipe that's calling for stock, I have it in an instant. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. If you'd like more videos like this, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And then also, you can always find me on my website, designsbydeyoung.com.